Hi, I'm Sean with SparkFun Electronics, and over the next few episodes, I'm going to get you started with the Intel Edison. Today, I'm going to show you how to connect the Edison to your computer and blink an LED using the Arduino software. But first, let me tell you a little bit about the Edison. The Edison is an entire computer on a tiny module. It's got a 500 megahertz dual core atom processor, 100 megahertz 32 quart processor, one gigabyte of RAM, four gigabytes of flash memory, dual band Wi-Fi, which is 802.11 ABGN, and Bluetooth 4.0, all on this tiny module. If you look on the module, it also has an onboard antenna and UFL connector if you want to bring your own antenna. Additionally, it's got 40 GPIO pins, including PWM, I2C, SPY, UART, SD card pins, and a USB on the go. All of this comes through a 70-pin Hirose connector on the back. Unless you're really good at soldering, you need a baseboard to break out these pins. You might be wondering what you can use the Edison for. Keep in mind that there are no video output capabilities coming out of the Edison, so there's no HDMI, S-Video, or VGA connections. The primary features are small size and low power in a package that is still running full Linux. In conversations, I've heard several ideas about using the Edison for an autonomous flight controller in a quadcopter, or creating wearables that can connect to the internet or your phone, or even remote battery-powered sensors that you could log into like a full computer. Let's fire this thing up. Right now, the Mini Breakout and the Arduino expansion boards are available. I'm going to be using the Arduino expansion board. You can use the Mini Breakout board, but it does not have an onboard LED that we can blink. Remember that the pins on the bottom side of the Mini Breakout board are 1.8 volt logic. You can still program the Edison on the Mini Breakout with the Arduino, but you'll likely need a level shifter to test other hardware. If you're using the Arduino expansion board, screw in the white standoffs to the mounting holes. Place the Edison in the white outlined area over the standoffs. Carefully press the Edison to snap it into the connector, and then hand tighten the two nuts over the Edison. Plug in the USB micro cable to the socket without the FTDI chip, and on the Arduino expansion board, slide the switch to the micro B socket side. We will be using a modified version of the Arduino software. I will show you how to download and install the software from Intel's site on Windows. The steps are similar on Mac OS X and Linux. If you're on Windows, you're going to need 7-Zip. To start, open a browser and navigate to 7-Zip.org and download the 7-Zip program for your operating system. In this case, we're going to use the Windows 64-bit edition. Install the program. Next, head over to maker.intel.com. Go down and click on Explore Intel Edison. Navigate to Software and Documentation, and then click View. You're going to want to download the Arduino software for your operating system, so it'll be Windows for us. And then if you're on Windows, go to the bottom and you'll see a Windows driver setup. Download that as well. Open up the driver set executable and let that install. Navigate to your Downloads folder and find the Arduino software that we downloaded. It will have a .7z extension. Right-click, go to 7-zip, and say Extract Here. Now is when we'll plug the other end of the USB cable into our computer. When you plug in the Edison, you should notice a pop-up from Autoplay asking what to do with the new Edison drive. Go ahead and close that. Click on the Start button and search for Device Manager. Open up your Device Manager and find something that says Ports. Expand that and you should see Intel Edison Virtual COM port. Make a note of the COM port number, which is 20 in this case. Close the device manager, go to your downloads folder, and find where we unzipped the Arduino software. Go into that folder and you'll see an Arduino executable. Double click to start the Arduino program. Go to Files, Examples, Basics, and Blink. That should open up an example sketch for you. Then go to Tools, Board, and make sure that Edison is selected. Go back to Tools, select Serial Port, and click on the COM port, and it should say the COM port number that we noticed in the Device Manager, which is 20 in this case. All you have to do is click the Upload button, and then you should see Transfer Complete at the bottom of the Arduino program. And now your Edison board should be blinking an LED about once per second. And that's our first steps into the world of Edison. We can easily use the Edison as a replacement for an Arduino. But remember, there's full Linux running on the inside of that module. And while we can program the Edison with the Arduino software, that's just one of the many ways to interact with it. Over the next few episodes, we'll explore Linux running on the inside of the Edison and learn about some of the other ways you can program it. So stay tuned.